Before I start the video, I am well aware that this is considered a controversial opinion or a controversial video in the sense that there is a large majority of people that support this indie animation show being made by Vivian Madrano. With some other projects that are coming up at hand that have gotten a successful long run to the point where it's about to be shown on the public eye, for example, like Haspen Hotel. This is more of a video criticisms about it, and I'm going to give my best to say the reason why i don't like the show because it's more of a show that i was watching but i could even put into words as to why i don't like it so i'm just gonna try my best to put into words as to why i don't like it and i know there's gonna be some people that will disagree agree or just agree with my point and add something to what i want to say disagree and just use that point and probably make a tweet about it on Twitter for this video to get hate rated. But let's just see how it goes. Now, when you first hear adult cartoon, you're expecting some of the topics or the themes that are going to be in the adult cartoon show. For example, like ex excessive swearing, explicit content, explicit humor, maybe some trauma events and some scenes that involve with hard topics to talk about. But in a way where they turn it to the point where it can relate to people that have experienced those type of things. And and make it more relatable into the aspect of real life put it in a cartoon where people can view it and also enjoy it and understand what the character is coming from for example like hell of a boss and Hasbro hotel those two animation pilots that were uploaded on youtube has gotten double digits of the millions of views it got viewed on with potential of seeing this as an adult cartoon well so far hell of a boss has gone its place to make it into a full show with having two seasons currently it's now on season two with a hiatus that's been going on for the copyright situation that vivian madrano has been trying to handle that situation in the best way possible it was mentally draining but after all that's done they were finally able to continue with the show when i saw the hell of a boss pilot and i'm not gonna lie i was kind of shocked with the topics and the themes that were shown in that pilot and <laughs> i was surprised that it was allowed to be shown on youtube because you know the guidelines when it comes to making an animation video any project i should say where if, if it gets demonetized it's gonna be demonetized for the reason that it's gonna be something that are not suitable for people to see on the platform although logically we have youtube kids but you know the ceo doesn't even know what they're doing or the team i should say so then i watched the episode season one episode one for hell of a boss watched the entire thing and it was okay it wasn't good it wasn't great but it was okay season two comes by and i only watched a little bit and I just didn't watch the rest of the episode. Then episode three came out and I didn't have that feeling of FOMO and FOMO means fear of missing out. And I didn't have that feeling of missing out on the quote unquote lore or basically the saga of hell of a boss that makes me want to keep on watching this show but have that feeling of yes i'm a fan of this show i love this series i'm just not having that i'm not having that kind of feeling okay i'm not trying to throw any shade on indie game show animators to have these potentials i mean i did watch lackadaisy i did say it was good it was okay it probably has some potential to making this as a show but then again with all due respect it's all just a test run and whether or not people will like it or they will not like it Criticism plays an important part when it comes to making animations, whether it's on the public eye or whether it's on the online medias, whichever it's on YouTube, on Twitter, showing the updates, some sneak peeks that you might post on TikTok. Posting your animation project on YouTube is the only platform that you can use for people to watch it and whether or not people will enjoy it, if it's good, if it's bad, and does it have potential to be a an extended series? Will this become a profit to the person's career that created and directed the show? Now for Hell of a Boss, I didn't get that kind of feeling to watch the rest of the episodes, like I said. I did watch episode 7 part 1, but apparently there was no part 2. My best assumption is because of the whole copyright situation that Vivian Madrano and his team had to go to, had to go through, which was mentally draining. I do understand that when it comes to making an indie animation show, it takes a lot of time and effort to start it and end it. The scripts, the animations, making sure there's no mistakes, making sure everything is synced up, making sure that the team is okay because you can't just rush 
a team finish it on a deadline you need to make sure that your team is physically and mentally okay to continue vivian madrano makes a tweet talking about season two episode eight that's currently in the works before release just a reminder eight is very much spectacle it was meant to be a big visual bang with a simple story as a direct follow-up to another episode i really hope everyone likes it but at this point that really is what it is be mindful of expectations please personally i'm just thrilled everyone's hard work will finally be seen and the story will be that much more complete that's all I care about now. I then make a tweet saying this. I get this. She's trying to hype up the upcoming project she's been working on. But she has to understand that no matter how hard or how long you've been spending on something, there's still going to be people that don't like it. Take James Cameron, for example. He spent 10 years making Avatar. And yes, the movie got $2.8 billion in the box office. But there's still a group of people that don't like the movie. I don't know. This quote unquote expect expectations, please, seems a bit off for a director and creator to say. And be honest with me. Have you ever seen a director make a tweet or have you seen an article of a director making a statement or saying a sentence saying something like my project is going to be a bang you guys will not be disappointed for example like christopher nolan stefan hillenberg george lucas greta gerwig or sam raimi you never seen any director make a statement or a tweet saying this all right because the director doesn't know whether or not the movie is going to flop or is going to be a hit it's all in the matter of chance whether or not people will like it or not like it there was a tweet that sticky blue red responded with the tweet saying what's your honest thoughts about today's new episode and how will you rate it he responds with it just reminded me of this and it's just a fan edit of vivian madrano's project with the we're gonna die young featuring pitbull i'm not gonna sing the song because of copyright all right so i just realized that it's called season one episode eight and not season two episode eight my apologies i go to the tweet where it talked about today's episode and how would you rate it just to see people's criticisms and here's what i found it didn't felt complete there was a lot of animation style changes you can distinctly pick out when it happens too it's not subtle it also felt like there was entire scenes missing the song was nice the character designs were good but i was left with a that's it feel i was just a little confused on what it took so long what did they need to copyright i really had a great time with it the music was fantastic and the queen bee was a wonderful character it's nice to see kesha have work seven out of ten overall it was an enjoyable episode some of the world building is confusing queen bee and vortex's relationship makes me wonder why stolis is so scrutinized there was some good luna development but her character feels worse in season two episode two the public seems to see blisso as a washed up failure while from what we've seen of vortex he's really popular and has the girl swooning stolen was also cheating even if it's valid under the circumstances no joke one out of ten the animation kept switching it was choppier than usual the characters were flat and there was zero plot the design of queen bee was too busy and didn't match her name she's called queen bee but isn't a bee why also that bliss thing at the end felt forced definitely number one because of beelzebub 69 out of 10 i even drew a new piece with luna that new song has a tasty sweet lick they sure sing about con candy a lot for a show that supposedly takes place in hell underwhelming too fast kind of disappointing for the hype it had but still enjoyable just kind of expected more slash better also b song was obnoxiously long i'm sorry again good but it kind of been cut down a bit i'm obsessed also this scene made me smile five out of ten it felt more like a music video in all honesty which can be good but it kind of went on a bit too long kesha's design is pretty great but i think i still like the previous two episodes more having kesha voice b was so cool and her design is really cool looking too but the last part of the episode effing broke me like f it's like the song that playing the Aussies in Western Energy end credits. F, kill me. And also, apparently, most of the fan base that supports Hell of a Boss or Hasman Hotel are children. Which is pretty concerning, and in the most non-biased way of me putting this, it's not really Vivian Madrano's fault that it's really just getting the the audience that are at an adolescence of age watching these projects that are made for adults. It's more of the parents that are not monitoring their children's technology whether or not if it's the ipad the phone the computer or even their consoles like the xbox the playstation the nintendo switch using youtube to watch a couple of videos and then they stumble upon with hell of a boss or husband hotel and it's more of their problem instead of vivian madrano's problem now i decide with vivian madrano saying that it's not her fault that it draws a lot of children with 
being fans of this show however it is a serious problem that is still circulating even if it's trying to be prevented dubas gubas responded to a tweet with the regards of the design for queen b in season one episode eight with this saying i truly don't understand the criticism over queen b's design it's an independent show that should not follow any rules or anybody's opinions besides the creators just appreciate the new design perspective of the all-known character that's it and this tweet gained a lot of attention dubas gubas responded to the tweet with saying this my main problem with viv z's designs is so many of them are way too over detailed there are so many extra lines on these designs that just make it feel cluttered and hard to remember in my head this was just a particularly bad example of that not all her designs mind you i think may looks pretty good but she also has like four colors in her palette rather than freaking 90 so her few extra details are more easy to remember and make out as biased as it sounds some of the characters that are in hell of a bar are just bait for artists to draw and just gain attention i mean i don't really have a problem with characters that are redrawing a character from an indie animation show or a show or a video game or from a movie because that's just how artists start they draw characters from their own style they gain traction and they find their own art style they make their own character and then they make a career out of it online it's just that the characters that instead of just being characters from a story it's more of just characters to give fan service material all right the reason why hell of a ball and Hasbun Hotel is still relevant to this year is that the fan base has made so much Rule 34 artworks being said from my brothers that they know more of the internet more than I do. I mean, yeah, I, I guess I find it a pretty smart tactic that these characters are more of just fan service material than just characters by itself. And I get that this is an animation, animation project that is meant for adults. But, you know, for an animation show for, that's meant for adults, you could put those type of topics and themes in a show but just give it more character and more passion to it instead of making it look obvious to why it's an adult show with swear words, sex jokes, drugs, just to make a show that's appealing to people and not for just people that like those type of topics and handle those type of topics. Just make more people to enjoy the show instead of just making it obvious of why the show exists because it's just for adults. <laughs> As I was scrolling down to Vivian Madrano's Twitter, it turns out that she responded to the claims being made that Vivian Madrano cannot handle criticism with a long twitter thread for the record i've had this quote viv can't take criticism reputation since i was 17 and i said quote i don't really want to get my feedback from the bad web comics wiki and now there's nothing i can say or do to convince these people otherwise it's been the same nasty crap ever since i'm speaking about it because it's been non-stop for years and i'm just kind of over it if you can't fathom that bad faith misinformed or incorrect takes on media could possibly exist then you are simply incapable of introspection when people say it's unprofessional to acknowledge this kind of thing when you've endured it for years on work you and an entire team put so much into I hate to break it to you but it's far less professional to crap publicly all over your peers work i recently had a meeting with a studio and, and a show i dislike and i am hypercritical about came up unbeknownst to me the person i was meeting with helped develop the show thankfully my taste on it don't exist anywhere but my head and my friends but it put a lot into perspective you really never know who in this biz you are going to hurt with negative criticism valid or not you never know which of your peers put their heart into something you don't like i used to be far more open with my opinions but it's just not not something i care to do anymore there's no shame in sharing critical opinion but there's a reality if this is an industry you want to exist in and it's one i've just learned to be wary of, pers of personally i'm thinking my own skin to bad faith yet i see so many people so fragile with their own opinions on media that a creator acknowledging that bad taste can exist without anything directly cited automatically makes them feel like it must be about them and their criticism why i'm going to continue with the thread just in a little bit but i just want to say something of what she said when she said that you never really know what your peers worked on something that you dislike and you might hurt them that's just what criticism is all right like if you cannot handle criticism then i guess you're just fragile and the most fair way to put it or maybe you're just getting ready for people that either like or dislike what you poured your heart into it no matter how long or how hard you put your heart into something that you want to be put into the public eye whether or not you've worked with a large group of people or a small group of people for example like take hollow knight okay a game that i do enjoy but 
there's still people that dislike it because of how long the game is yeah you ended up getting lost the mechanics are kind of confusing and the lore is also confusing as well some people enjoy it despite if they don't understand the lore or if they do understand the lore they're more of there to have the enjoyment and how it's more of trial and error to understand the mechanics and the patterns of a person that is attacking you whether or not it's an enemy or a boss battle now yes Team Cherry is an indie game studio made by a small team of people, but within that success of Hollow Knight being a masterpiece, there's still people that dislike it. Not every single piece of media that you see, that you watch, or that you play is meant for you to enjoy, okay? Whether you like it or you dislike it, it's up to you. It is because deep down, you know your criticism has basis in bigotry or ignorance or anger or hate. Because I feel like if you assume it's about you, then yes, maybe it is. I'll say this. Criticism for the millionth time is a constant and important factor in the growth of art. We creators take it, we see it, we do our best to constantly improve. Everyone can and should be critical of media, and you can choose to be public about it. But criticism, like everything, can be subjective, and some can challenge it, some can criticize it, disagree, or disregard it. If you can't handle that, maybe you aren't fit to be giving it. With the boldest assumption that she makes with bigotry, ignorance, anger, or hate. I mean, yeah, there are some people with criticisms that they hate this or that they don't like this with just this tone of anger. But not all criticisms have this anger or hate basis or bigotry or ignorance basis. Some people may have a criticism that has a fair statement to say, but for some people it has led to bigotry, ignorance, anger, or hatred to the point where even any form of criticism towards a masterpiece that a large amount of people like, even though there's a small amount of people that dislike, is considered a controversial opinion with how many people like it and the small people dislike it. And I'm not trying to downplay any of the people that are working on this for example like michael kovac who is the voice actor for angel dust or kesha that was recently in the episode for hell of a boss season one episode season one episode eight or david tunes who is an animator that, that's currently animating in the studio for hell of a boss being directed by viva madrano it's more of just me giving the reason why i don't like this show or why this may not be fit for me but can be fit for someone else and yeah there are some people that do enjoy this show but it's just that what i fear is that when people criticize about Hell of a Boss or Hasbun Hotel, they fear about how their fandom reacts and how it will affect their give their opinions, whether it's on Twitter, on TikTok, on YouTube, or if it's on a live stream on Twitch. Any form of media that they give the criticism about Hell of a Boss because there are either a small or a large majority of people that enjoyed this show that will take that criticism as an offense instead of a fair statement. Also, if you feel like you need to attack me over the faintest hint, I might not be listening to your criticism specifically. Well, congrats, you're in the company of people posting cat snuff videos at me for what I said. Maybe it's time you just accept you don't like my shows anymore and F off, heart emoji. For those who are critical but know what I said didn't apply to you, power to you folks, for real. This thread is huge, might delete it later, feel free to save it, lol. I know it does nothing in the grand scheme of things, but I don't regret speaking on this. Feels good to scream, but I'm done dwelling on this negativity. There's too much good crap to be excited about love y'all now to respond to this this entire criticism about hell of a boss should not be about vivian madrano to specifically watch it okay i don't really expect vivian madrano to watch this because if i did make the intent for this entire criticism video criticizing about hell of a boss for vivian madrano to watch it then this entire video is just personal and not the entire opposite of what i'm saying okay if this entire video is personal then this video would defeat the purpose of why i'm making it in the first place the people would like to listen to my criticism about hell of a boss they have the opportunity and they have the freedom to do so now as Benoto is currently in the works of making an official show being made by a24 and bento box entertainment presenting hell of a boss an original series by vipsy pop coming soon and i also would like to say that if this video somehow makes you convinced that you don't want to watch hell of a boss anymore i'm just gonna here to tell you this do not take my word as the reason why you don't like hell of a boss if you don't like hell of a boss that should be your opinion and not my word my criticism videos should not convince you as to why you should not watch hell of a boss my video criticizing about hell of a boss should not convince you to stop being a fan okay if you're still a fan of hell of a boss or has been hotel keep going go for it okay i don't care that you bought a doll or you bought a paper with a signed print of one of the voice actors or the creator or you bought a freaking body pillow or a christmas present being sent by your friend or your cousin that's also a fan of this that's all on you okay and it's not on me and if you get made fun of it that's also on you not on me <laughs> all right just making jokes here but yeah this 
this video took a long time for me to make. I've been wanting to talk about this, but I'm not sure when should I do it and if I should post it, all right? I've seen some criticisms about Vivian Madrano about her setting of these projects and why they don't like Hell of a Boss or Hospital Hotel. With her saying that the criticisms are mostly targeted to her and make sure that she's watching this, it just defeats the purpose of a criticism video or a video to critique about something or someone. Like, everybody has an opinion about something or someone, all right? But if you're just making that video just for them to watch it, then it's just personal. It just defeats the purpose about a, criti about a critique video. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below what you think about the video. If you did enjoy, leave a like. If you don't enjoy, leave a dislike. If you guys can somehow see the dislikes because YouTube took out that feature. Uh, let me know if you do agree with my points, if you disagree, or if you agree and they have something to add, or you disagree and... However, can convince me to continue watching Hell of a Boss. I lost interest after watching season two, episode two, and uh, yeah, it's just maybe the show is just not for me and meant for someone else to watch it. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, you think about the video. This is Wolf Dog Gray, and I'll see you all later. See ya.